What's going on guys, it's Boy Joe Boy here and today I've got you a 2016 Austrian Grand Prix review for you guys. Uh, I'm in the kitchen, different scenery, I know, but uh, slightly change it up, you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into this day's video. So right off the bat, Red Bull, they announced that Ricardo and Verstappen will be staying until 2018 at the least, which is insane, it's crazy. Um, big ups to them, they deserve it, especially Max Verstappen with that win early in the season and that was just something special from him there, so he deserves to stay with Red Bull of course. Daniel Ricciardo of course, same again, I mean he's been the shy now, he's been you know the most, he's been the most insane, the best sort of up and coming driver out there to be honest, uh, right up there with Vettel so he clearly deserves to stay uh, for a while now so yeah I'm happy for both of them and really it's a shame for Danny Kvyat because all his chances, all his like little hopes of him getting back into Red Bull are pretty much gone for him now because he has to wait until 2018 at the least to get a seat which sucks, which totally sucks so yeah, um, but I don't know what's going to happen to Daddy. I don't know what's going to his future's going to be. I personally think he's just going to get booted, like Jordan Byrne, like Special Boy, like Jaime Alcantara. He's going to get the boot, and I reckon if it does happen, maybe go to what the others have done, which is Formula E. Yeah. Also, the sausage curbs uh, in Australia—they were a bit of a problem all throughout the weekend, particularly with a lot of the drivers, including Nico Rosberg, uh, Sergio Perez and uh, Max Verstappen. Well, maybe not Max Verstappen because uh, during the session Max actually had a bit of trouble with his like front wing or whatever. He went, he went off the road a couple of times in practice, so not really been good for him, but um, I will talk about him later on. But he did, he would he would go on to do uh, much better things uh, later this weekend, so yeah. But like I said, I'll talk about that more later on. And in practice three, a spectacular crash happens. Uh, especially with the bollards I was talking earlier, um, he crashes into the barriers uh, because his uh, left uh, rear suspension uh, came off and uh, yeah, he hit the wall and that was really unfortunate so uh, yeah but thankfully the, the Mercedes crew do get the car able to uh, compete, could, uh, get out of Q1 um, so yeah that was good of them but yeah uh, very very weird and uh, to be honest I just think these like little sausage curves, whatever they are, are just too much. I mean, if, uh, if you want to enforce track limits, do uh, delete the lap times if they do uh, go off the road, or even penalise them during the race as well. So, um, say if they do it multiple times, um, they will get a penalty for it. Just like in Formula One games, you know, like if you go off the road, you get a warning. Do it again, you get a warning, and then uh, one more, you get a penalty. So. Maybe something like that would be a really good idea, it would make sense to be honest in terms of enforcing track limits, there wouldn't be a danger of, uh, of a crash, it would be nice and safe to be honest, so um, yeah, if it, if, it, if it is the case I would be down for 100%. Going into qualifying, it was a really really interesting session, which I'll talk more later on, but we'll start in Q1. Um, a lot of drivers went out and set their lap times, but one driver who uh, damaged their suspension, just like Nico Rosberg earlier uh, in the morning, was uh, Sergio Perez. He actually uh, damaged uh, his suspension on the same uh, place as Rosberg on the left rear. Uh, so yeah, he had damage, and as a result, he could not complete Q1, which meant he would be starting 17th place. I don't know whether he got a five place grip penalty or not, but. Um, yeah, he would start round 17 play, which is unfortunate, uh, to be honest, uh, especially as it was not his fault, to be honest, I mean, he, he was looking like he would easy get into Q2, or even, he better still get into Q3, so maybe challenge his teammate or some of the other cars around him, so, yeah, really unfortunate, uh, especially as something like this uh, cost him a chance of getting into Q2. Yeah. And then in the end of Q1, we had a spectacular crash again with the Sausage Curves, this time with Danny Kvyat, who went flying uh, out of turn 8 and uh, hitting the wall, hitting the pit lane entry in turn 9 and going flying into the uh, outside uh, wall at turn 9. 
very, very uh, lucky. Thank, very, very uh, lucky that uh, he was able to get out, get out of that. Okay, uh, which is great to see, of course. Um, yeah, third person. This no, three five. This is claimed so far during the weekend, which is crazy. I mean. Like I said, if you're going to enforce track limits, if it's, if it's because of track limits, if you want to do that safely, you just put in uh, inv uh, invalidated laps or something like that, it would make more sense. But um, yeah, very, very crazy. Um, a lot of the driver pushing hard and some uh, going over the limit and uh, paying the price, which is uh, for Danny Kvyat hitting that uh, yellow sausage curve and uh, flying into the outside wall at turn nine. Very, very, but for like I said, very lucky that he was able to get out of that, okay. So then there was a red flag, and then afterwards, um, Slight apparently didn't uh, go out. He didn't do anything, which meant he would start in 17th alongside Sergio Perez. So, very, very weird, to be honest. Uh, excuse me. Uh, very, very weird, but, um, yeah, like I said, I don't know why, but Slight didn't set at that time Q2, and I don't know. It was very, very weird. So, yeah, it must have, he must have been... And you must have had the same suspension pain as uh, Perez as well. So, yeah. And then continuing on Q2, uh, the rain started to come down. And that made it quite interesting for a lot of the drivers who may have may not set their best lap time uh, on the slick tyres. As the rain came down and uh, Alonso, I don't know why, but he said the track was dry, the track was okay. Yeah, fair enough, he's the driver, but... When the track is, when the rain is coming down quite a lot, and a lot of the other drivers are going on to uh, intermediates and that, and or even staying in the pit, you know it's starting to get wet. And uh, I don't know, it was a very, very, I don't know, it was very, very weird from Alonso to say that it was okay when really it was just coming down hard. So yeah, but um, yeah, there was a lot of action in in the start, but then the end. Like I said, the rain came down, that was it. And as a result, Alonso was out, he was starting 14. So he paid the price for uh, him uh, saying that uh, it was okay, it was dry, it was alright to stay out. When really he should have picked it and maybe even see if he can try and get out in uh, on a set of intermediates, possibly. I don't know, but yeah, very, very odd call from uh, Alonso to take his try. Also, another thing I want to point out Jensen Button. He got to Q3 for the first time in like, what, ages, probably since the British Grand Prix a couple of years ago, so kudos to him, he had, he had a really good job uh, putting that McLaren on the, into the top 10 once again. Um, it's nice to see Jensen in the top 10, we haven't seen him in the top 10 ever uh, in a long time, so yeah, kudos to uh, Jensen, especially uh, in, mix, uh, in a mixed sort of session. So, yeah. so going into Q3, um, the weather hit and uh, yeah, it was quite damp, so a lot of the drivers went on intermediate. But then it started to dry out, and we had a lot of the drivers um, deciding whether or not they were just hanging out on inters or uh, risking it and going for slicks. Now, the first driver who went for slicks was uh, Nico Hockenberg. Um, it was about three minutes into the session, he went in for slicks. And uh, yeah, we're quicker. So others went into the pit. They did the same thing. Um, and yeah, they went out and uh, did their lap times. And um, yeah, the first man who uh, the first big gun that was able to uh, go quickest was Sebastian Vettel. Really loving the condition. He went two seconds quicker than everyone, anyone else. But then the track got drier and drier. Then we saw more lap times, more drivers going quicker and quicker. Until we had Lewis Hamilton going on pole position. Uh, in the Mercedes, I think it's a 107 something, which is a great lap time by Lewis. Um, great on him. Second was Nico Hulkenberg, so he actually did a really good job. He actually got the most laps out of anyone because he pit, he was the first one to pit, so he got the most out of it. And third was uh, Jensen Button, yeah, Jensen Button, so yeah, he did a really good job. And uh, yeah, um, fourth, I believe, was. Um, Sebastian Vettel, but he would have a five place grid penalty, so he would start uh, ninth. Same with Nico Rothberg, he started, uh, no, Nico started fourth actually, so he would start uh, ninth on the grid. Sebastian also had a five place grid drop, he would start tenth, I believe it was. So, uh, yeah, um, uh, Rothberg, because of the incident uh, at the uh, turn two, which had made him have to change his gearbox, which gave him that 
five page group on the and that's all uh, because he had to change his uh, gearbox as well too. So that was the reason why for both cars. So yeah, Lewis on pole position, a great lap, and uh, yeah, definitely putting him in the hunt in the hunt to uh, claw back the points that he lost in uh, the last round in Azerbaijan. At the start of the race, it was a good start from Lewis Hamilton. He managed to pull away from Nico Hulkenberg. But then, as they got into turn one, Jensen Button managed to get ahead of Nico Hulkenberg because Nico Hulkenberg had a bad start, dropping into third place, which meant that it was a British one too, not since um, probably 2014 of Britain. Um, so yeah, that was a good, uh, that's a good shout right there. So that was nice to see um, Hulkenberg. Yeah, he, he like I said, Hulkenberg dropped off uh, after the start. He would he would really struggle in the Force India. He would drop so down, so it's low as probably 12th, 13th, which is which is really awful. So um, yeah, Nico Hockenberg not managing to uh, really set the pace that he, uh, he that we would all be fearing going into the race, especially with that force in. Also further back, we saw Sebastian Vettel and Nico Rosberg uh, get up the pack. Uh, they got up to uh, fourth and third, right behind Raikkonen and Jensen in second and third. So they managed to do a really good job. Uh, they got up to that position about five, six laps, which was great from them, which put them in, and because they, that put them in a great position to maybe do something in the race in terms of the win, of course. And then on uh, lap 10, I believe it was, uh, Raikkonen got ahead of Jensen Button, which put him into second place and really put him in a good position to maybe try some with his strategy because uh, Hamilton was running with the ultra softs and Raikkonen was running with the super softs because uh, in Q2, uh, the tyre that you set the fastest lap on uh, are the tyres that you will start for the race. So uh, Raikkonen set the fastest lap on uh, soft tyres, uh, soft, super soft tyres, whereas Hamilton set them on ultra soft. So that meant that Raikkonen and Vettel were on super soft and really can make hay uh, with the strategy that they had. So yeah. And then the first person to blink out of all of the uh, front runners was uh, Nico Rosberg. He ran to the soft tyres. Uh, pushed really hard, he managed to pull, put a lot faster laps and, and, and pulling himself right in contention uh, of a win towards uh, Lewis who was on old uh, ultra soft tyres. But on lap 28, uh, Sebastian Vettel, who was trying to extend the life of his uh, super soft to try and go for one stop, uh, his tyres uh, blew up uh, right in the pit, in, in the pit entry, uh, no, right on the, on the pit straight. Uh, hitting the wall very, very hard and coming back and almost collecting the man. I believe it was uh, Pascal Verlein who was running in 11 at the time. So, very, very scary indeed. Uh, very lucky for Pascal to not get collected in that. And very lucky for Seb as well uh, to not sustain the even greater in, uh, accident in that uh, via Pascal as well. So, yeah, very, very lucky indeed. Uh, thankfully, Vettel was actually able to get out of the car okay. So, yeah, but there were a lot of uh, debris with the tyres and all that, so that meant that the safety car was out. And, uh, yeah, a lot of the drivers um, went to the pits uh, during that. Um, not No real sharp end people, just midfielders. Um, also, as well, the safety car had to go through the pits as well. So, um, just like in Hungary last year, uh, a lot of the safety car had to go through the pits because the debris on the pit stroke was just awful, absolutely awful. But thankfully we were able to get going in a few laps which was good to see. So then the safety car comes in and Lewis starts beaming in those laps trying to pull away from the rest of the field ahead. And then a couple laps later Lewis picks to get onto the soft tyres and as he's coming out of the pit goes behind Nico Rosberg so that meant that uh, Lewis would have a lot to work to do to Past Nico Rosberg because Nico really put himself right to play with those fastest laps, which meant that he was in, eventually in the lead because Raikkonen was struggling too, um, as well as Hamilton either. So, um, yeah, what well, Ferrari, I don't know what's going on with their strategy. I mean, it looked like they were just tunnel visioning Hamilton and not thinking about anyone else, you know, in terms of the Red Bulls and that, because Raikkonen actually did get a go behind the Red Bulls too as well. So, yeah, it was kind of weird to him. I thought like Ferrari was smarter than that and would have sort of reacted to the likes of Red Bull or Nico Rosberg for that matter. So very, very weird indeed. And uh, yeah, not their race at all. I mean, very, very strange that they would like all of a sudden focus on Lewis but not on the others, which is very, very weird. Also, a couple of drivers uh, retired from the race. That included Danny Kvyat, unfortunately. 
Um, Sergio Perez, I believe it was, yeah. Um, and a few others as well, so unfortunate for them a lot. Um, they all, pretty much, they all retired pretty much between that 50 to that 60, so uh, yeah, um, unfortunate, but they were running at the back, so I guess they were, I guess they thought there was no point in racing, and if they did, it would have, you know, damaged the uh, life of the engine, so fair enough, and especially as they got like eight, seven, six sets for the whole year, so yeah, they got to be careful on that one. But out in front, there was still two Mercedes leading, but uh, around lap 51 to 54, uh, Hamilton goes into the pits first, which was kind of surprising to be honest because you would assume that because Rosberg is leading from the two Mercedes, he would uh, come in first to uh, defend the undercut from uh, Lewis Hamilton, but no, he doesn't. He actually comes in uh, last out of the two uh, Mercedes on that second pit stop, so Lewis with the undercut and the perfect opportunity to take the lead away from Nico Rosberg. Uh, he actually runs wide in turn two and, and loses all sorts of time, a bunch of the time, which uh, enables uh, Nico to still keep the lead of the race and really extend it to about three seconds because before it was 1.5, now we're up to about two, three seconds, which is insane. So uh, Lewis sort of missing that golden opportunity to maybe overtake Nico Rosberg there. So uh, yeah, this is actually the second time that he's done it actually uh, before. Uh, remember he did it in Brazil, so uh, uh, yeah, but I guess fair enough, I mean, he's, like, he's got a lot of pressure, I mean, it's the way it is, you know, you've got a lot of pressure, you're trying to get ahead, so I guess fair enough to Lewis for that, you know, I mean, happens to the best of us, I mean, so yeah, fair enough. So Lewis is behind Nico Rosberg, but Lewis starts clutching up to Nico Rosberg, he's pushing hard, he's giving it everything, but then ahead was uh, Max Verstappen, who was staying out on the tyres, he was trying to make that one stop work. But unfortunately, the tyres didn't have enough uh, performance to uh, get him ahead of, to keep ahead of the Mercedes, which meant that the Mercedes were all over the back of Max Verstappen, and then they both overtook them, and then it was a straight fight for the lead of the race. And uh, yeah, also for Max Verstappen, he also got caught by a uh, Riker, but he was able to keep Riker them behind. So yeah, um, but I'll talk about that later on. But yeah, the Mercedes were closing up on each other, and going into the final lap. Lewis has the best exit ever coming out of turn one. Has a selection, has a run on Nico Rosberg going into turn two. Uh, goes alongside Hamilton on the outside, Nico Rosberg on the inside. And as they're going into turn two, Nico Rosberg just, in my opinion, just turned straight into Lewis Hamilton, damaging a little bit of the side bodies of his uh, car. And also for Rosberg, it was karma for him because he actually damaged his front wing. Uh, and as a result, that gave Lewis the lead. And uh, yeah, he would go on to win the race as Nico, whilst Nico Rosberg uh, came home in fourth place. Uh, now, I don't know whether Nico's got a penalty for it because they did say after the race that they were going to investigate it. Uh, personally, in my opinion, in the whole incident, really, to be honest, I think it was. I think it was more Nick. I think it was Nico's fault, to be honest. Um, I just Lewis was on the outside. He was on the almost. He was on the edge of that uh, white line, the exit of the outside white line, whilst Nico uh, was on the inside with a lot of space that he could have given to Lewis. But no, he doesn't. And looking at the steering angle, he just goes straight, and then just before the exit, just before. The, uh, the edge of the white line just turns in and hits Lewis. So clearly, Nicky Curry was by 400%, and he actually got calm for it because he actually had that damage front wing. I was actually screaming so much, it was crazy. You should have seen my reaction. I was literally screaming payback and payback to Nico Rosberg because he actually deserved it. Because literally, it was his fault 100%, down, down deep. Even Mike Brundle said it was um, uh, his fault 100%, and uh, no right because he actually. Uh, he didn't like if he had if he had a, a lot of people were saying it was a brake issue. A lot of people were defending Rosberg for the brake issue, that kind of stuff. And I just say to that bullshit because if Nico was to have that uh, brake issue, he would have got miles up in turn one. Why did he done that exactly? So yeah, um, just stupid, really, really stupid. 
And like I said as well, back to the whole break issue, if he was to have that as well, he would have been off the road long before, so I don't know, no, it's just, it's just stupid from Nico. I, I, it's just, I don't know what, I don't know what Mercedes can do with this now, now this has gotten out of control. You know, this is becoming a Senna and Prost. We are witnessing a remastered version of Senna and Prost, but this time in Mercedes and with Tiff and Driver. So, I don't know what's going to happen next. I really don't know. Um, I don't know what Toto is going to do next. If it carries on like this, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. We could see something even worse, something even horrible. I mean, because we already had that, uh, the two Mercedes taking each other out of Spain. And now this. I mean, honestly, what, what's going to happen now with the two Mercedes? Are they just not going to race each other now? I don't know, but it's just crazy. It's crazy at the moment. I, I like it that I have no idea what is going to happen to the two Mercedes next. It, it, literally, we could see World War II at the end of it before we know. But yeah, Lewis comes home to win the race, of course. Uh, Max with a couple of in second place, great drive by him, he deserves it. Third was uh, Kimi Raikkonen, good drive by him as well. Uh, beating his teammate once again, even though his teammate had, uh, had an incident uh, in the pit straight. He still goes on to beat his teammate, which is nice. And Nick Rosbo calls uh, fourth place, we're going to talk about him earlier, so you go. Uh, fifth, I believe, was uh, Valtteri Bottas. So good drive, no, Valtteri finished eighth. Yeah, I do remember that Valtteri finished eighth. I believe fifth was uh, Dan, yeah, with Daniel Ricciardo. So uh, yeah, not really a good day for him, but whatever. I mean, it's, it's a fifth place, ten points. You, you can take it. Um, sixth was Jason Button. Good on him. Kudos to him. Good job by him. Uh, he deserves it, really. Yeah, I mean, that was awesome, especially uh, as it's the British Grand Prix this week. I mean, what a way to celebrate it by him finishing sixth place with eight points. I mean, that's awesome, and not far from his teammate Alonso in the standing. So that's pretty good in terms of his confidence, that's why you really need to help his championship a lot, so yeah, I'm happy for him, um, and yeah, like I said, out three and eight, and yeah, that's all I know so far, so yeah, crazy, crazy race, um, in my opinion, I'm probably going to give this a cheeky 9 out of 10, a very, very good, interesting weekend, of course, not to mention the race itself, very, very interesting, um, Pretty damn enjoyable, I loved it, it was awesome. The Mercedes controversy, that was insane, that was crazy. Like I said, I don't know what's going to happen with the two Mercedes now from here on out. Uh, the Vettel thing, very, very uh, crazy indeed. And like I said, very, very strange uh, indeed. Um, yeah, it's very, very strange. But mind you, Vettel, he knew, he knew that this was going to happen if he pushed the tyres too fast here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, very, very crazy race indeed. Very, very crazy. So, that's it guys. Uh, comment below what you thought about the race. Um, yeah, was it enjoyable? Was it good? Was it um, insane? Let me know down below. Also, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for me and ask you guys to make some for your boy. I am out. Peace.